<laughs> well, hello, everybody. This is Cleta Colson Air coming to you live from our Mary Kay meeting. And even though there's nobody behind me, there are about 10 beautiful women right in front of me. So we are doing the Pace Setter class lesson number five. And it is on short term goal setting. Last week we talked about goal setting a little bit, and hopefully, that y'all watched the video on that. And um, if you haven't, you can go back and catch up. And I was telling everybody else, is our website is cletacolson.com and then on the front page it says go director fast you click on it and the password is cheetah director that's a capital c no spaces okay so tonight on our short-term goal setting i really like it because here we are really we've been we started this pace there so we're in like the second month and we've been through really goal setting, team building, coaching, booking. And so now we're getting down to a little bit more and hopefully it's all adding up to you. And what I would suggest is to go back and look at them again, like watch the video again, get the papers out again. And that way, like for someone brand new, like you, you could, you could start anytime, but if you go back, then you'll kind of get the full scale of Mary Kay. And I think it will really help you. It's just basic training. Okay. So, um, what I want to say is that to me, to get going to Mary Kay and not to quit, you need two things, courage and perseverance. Don't y'all agree? <laughs> because it's easy sometimes to quit when things aren't going your way. And if you just in your mind think, I have to have courage and perseverance no matter what happens, I'm not gonna quit, and I'm gonna get 60 seconds of courage to call somebody. You know, that's what Mary Kay used to always say, just get 60 seconds of courage and go talk to that lady over there because it's not normal to talk to strangers, right? <laughs> but sometimes it's, it works out good for you, you know? And the worst thing that could happen is they could just say, I'm not interested, and you know, it's not for me. So I want you to think about that. So um, how do you do that? Well, first of all, number one is, we ourselves do not succeed or fail. It's the task or the project we are performing that su succeeds or fail. So if you think about that, you are not a failure. It, you may not succeed in a task, or something you're trying to do, but that doesn't mean you, as a person, are a failure. And so, a lot of times we beat ourselves up when we don't do something. But honestly, it just because you didn't have a $500 a week does not mean that you aren't a great seller, it just means you just didn't have a $500 a week, right? So I want you to really think about that, okay? And the, the factor that determines success or failure is the amount of courage and perseverance you had that week. Would y'all agree with that? Because some people have a bad first part of the week and then the end of the week they rally. And they go, nope, I'm not gonna get off the phone, I'm not gonna quit calling until I get those five bookings or whatever it is you're trying to get, right? But if the courage stops and you stop persisting and persevering, you know, then uh, sometimes you might feel like you had just a, a terrible week. <laughs> and it happens, I mean, hey, you know, we're in business for ourselves because you're gonna have up and down weeks, that's okay. So. The good news is that you are not a failure. So y'all write that on your piece of paper. You are not a failure. So get any kind of hangups you've got about, be, that, about being a failure off your shoulder and uh, just kind of be about your work with every ounce of courage and uh, perseverance that you can have. So I want to read you this little poem. Okay, I want you to think about it for yourself, all right? And it'll tell a lot about yourself. When faced with a disappointment, difficulty, difficulty or trouble, do you faint? or fight? Do you worry or work? Do you drift or drive? Do you talk or plan? Do you quit or quicken? Do you wait or wait in? Do you dictate or do you direct? Do you hope or do you hustle? Do you delay or do you decide? Or do you just make excuses? And so when I read that, I'm like, mm, some of those, I thought, I need to work on a couple of those. Do y'all? Mm -hmm. You know, but a lot of times, you do pretty good. Like, some of these, you're like, I do, I, I, I do fight. I get right back up. I, that's a good, you know, but some things that we can work on. So what we found is that people that have courage and perseverance, they don't make excuses. They just keep going no matter what. So right here in our little pace setter group, you know, it takes courage to keep even doing a pace setter thing. Some people you know you do one week and then they're done you know but if you really are doing the pace setters and doing the assignments you will find yourself moving up in the business i can guarantee that so i want to talk to you just a couple things that's going to help you with your business and one is that you're going to have to plan for postponements <laughs> how many of y'all have had any postponements since you've been in mary Kay yet 
Okay. If you have not had a postponement yet, has anybody not had a postponement? Somebody that didn't? Have you ever had a postponement? Yeah. Okay. I think pretty much everybody has. Because people, it is a people business. And so it's a people business. So you have life, you have sickness, you have, you know, people that have uh, issues. Yeah, you can use us. Yeah. Um, the awesome Denise. Uh, young Liz is over there doing the skincare class with all our guests. So, um, but I want you to just, in Mary Kate, when you know a few facts, you won't be disappointed about disappointments because it's just a fact, just like a dentist knows how many people cancel their dentist appointment. Don't y'all hate going to the dentist? I hate going to the dentist. And if I can think of an excuse not to go, then I'll cancel my appointment, even though I need to go, right? But they factor in that and they overbook. <laughs> okay, so the facts are, Mary Kate, is a 50% postponement. <clears throat> it's nothing you have done and it's just life. So what that means is if you want to have like if you want to do three parties you have got to book six on that for that week. I mean you have if you book three there's a good possibility you could have a, a, no parties that week because all three could postpone. But if you have six on your books like and like I used to say book so many that you almost hope something cancels. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, but if you have so many that you can't do, you can do them together or you can dovetail them and give them to a sister consultant, you know, um, or a team member. We would even be better, you know. So I would just say book more than you can do so that you will make sure. Because I have some people that are doing Mary Kay and this is their real job. I mean, like, if they don't sell a certain amount every week, they will not get to pay their house payment or buy groceries, right? And if that's the case, you have to plan for postponements and it's not a big deal. You just know you gotta book more than you can, than are gonna hold, you know, and basically twice as much, twice as much. So once y'all get, if you will just grasp that concept that it's not a big deal, that you know, you're gonna have postponements, but you're gonna keep going, then you won't be disappointed every week, week in, week out. Because what I've seen a lot of people that the biggest disappointments is when they book one, one and one postpones, and then they have none. And then they're like, okay, I'm going to book that one again. And then it postpones again, and they still have none. You know? So it's just something, I mean, I learned way back. And I knew that there'd be postponements. So I'm just telling y'all now, there will be. It's nothing. Of course, there's ways. We talked about coaching to help not have as many postponements, of course. But you're still going to have some. So just kind of plan for them. And as a consultant, it is your responsibility to coach your hostess like we talked about, and that was less than two lessons ago. So you may want to go over that. So you're going to du double book. Um, so the lesson to be learned from this discussion of booking and co coaching is it's when you exercise persistence, perseverance, and courage, and you go over, under, around, or through anything to achieve the success of the project you're working on, and it's your attitude. If you choose to have three selling appointments a week, how many of y'all got a book? Exactly. So just know that down right now. You have to book six to get three to hold, okay? And that's three, that's six people that go, yes, I'm gonna hold. I got people coming, okay? How many of y'all know when you invite people to the meeting? Like, if you invite five, you know, you might have two that come. That's five that go, yes, I'm coming. Tonight, I had one, told me she was come and that one did not show up. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I mean, like, my odds were not pretty too good. Now, if I'd had two tell me they were coming, I might have one show up. And that's just, that's just the way it is for all of us. So, I want to just kind of get that out of the way first. Okay, the second thing is um, short-term short -term goals. And this is how you're going to develop really those qualities of courage and persistence and uh, perseverance is by having short-term goals. Because a lot of times, let's say you go to seminar, and then you're like, okay, I'm going to, by next seminar year, I'm going to be doing this, 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 and this. Well, that is 12 months away. That'd be like me saying, <coughs> by next July, I'm going to lose 25 pounds. And do you know really when I'm going to lose it? I'm going to start on it? <laughs> June. Yeah, June, I'm going to, like, starve all month. Because I am not, like, it's too far away, right? It is good to have those long-term goals but you gotta break them down because you just can't keep focusing on something that is so far away. Would y'all agree on that? Okay, and so um, the short-term goals, it's just a must, it's a must. And you know, they say, um, we talked about you can't, 
eat an elephant in one bite, but you can eat an elephant one bite at a time. And so no matter what it is, if you break it down, you can do it. So you want to do, um, and what this, the short-term goals really do, it helps you be consistent. Because if you have goals every week, I have a girl that I, uh, she's a top director friend of mine, and we are doing a little accountability thing with her. And it's a daily, it's a daily goal. And the goal is to get up at a certain time and have our Mary Kay face on and our clothes on and have already done our devotional and be like ready to roll at a certain time. And so I check in with her every day and she checks in with me every day. And it's just being accountable. But I know if I miss it, which I did today, I missed it. I mean, I was up, but I just wasn't dressed at the right time. I know, well, tomorrow I'm, I'm back on it. You know what I'm saying? And so even though I failed that little task, then tomorrow I could be right back on and go, okay, tomorrow I'm doing it, you know? And so I'm not discouraged even though I didn't do it today because I had that goal, because I'm, it's a daily goal. Does that make sense? So if it's a daily goal, let's say you need to go get five leads a day, well, and you miss a day. Well, you know what? Then tomorrow just go get 10 and just pick yourself back up, right? So it's just a daily thing. So um, I think the short-term goal is really gonna help. So there's a little tool that I printed out for y'all. It's on the website too. And um, what I'd like y'all to do is before you leave, you can grab two of them. And it is called the Roadmap to Success. So I want y'all to pull that out. And it looks like, did you get it? Yep. It looks like this. All right, y'all go get it, because you're gonna need it. Okay, so the Roadmap to Success is something that, I, that you're, what you're gonna do, Br Misha, just go ahead and bring them all. Bring them all, she'll bring them. So what you're gonna do is, on one of these, I wanna make sure everybody has two. I should have enough. And, okay. And I think Denise already has some. So one of them you're gonna keep and it's gonna be the one you're gonna make copies of. Or you can go to the website and get it. And one is you're gonna use for this week. And we're gonna talk about what to put in the top, okay? So what you're gonna do is every, you're gonna pick, Okay. Okay. These people are unorganized here at my table, so sorry for the delay. <laughs> Just kidding. I love them so much. Okay. So these little sheets, they're on Facebook. I've already put them on there, and they'll be on the website tomorrow. But um, this is something that you're going to pick what five days in the week you're going to work. That's why it says one, two, three, four, five. Now, if you've got big goals, you can work seven days. Let me just go ahead and say that, okay? <coughs> no problem. But if you only want to work five days, and the only reason I didn't put Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, because some people, their days include Saturday and Sunday because of their other schedule. So what you're going to do is you're going to have a weekly goal, and I'm going to go over a suggestion of what I think that needs to be at the top, okay? And then you're going to put, and then every day you're going to put how many you actually did. Does that make sense? And you're gonna break it down, just every, have a daily goal, every day, every day, and it's gonna be kind of your roadmap to where you wanna go, all right? And then you can look back and look at your roadmap and say, how'd I do this week? Now, the time to do this is not like on Sunday night, go back and go, what'd I do all week? That is not how you track, okay? That is, I don't even know what that is. Tracking is when every night before you go to bed, you look, what did I do? And you write it down so that it will motivate you for the next day to catch up. Does that make sense? Okay, am I stepping on toes? All right. <laughs> it's okay. That's what I'm here for. Okay, so let's just talk about this. So if you want to write some of these that I would suggest for goals for you, it needs to be your goal, but I'm going to just give you some goals, all right, that you can kind of go with. Uh, some weekly tasks that you could do. Okay, so let's talk about the phone calls. Now, you know, we have our January Jumpstart coming up, and the goal is to do how many phone calls? Three. That's, yeah, and that's in two whole months. Okay, so we're going to erase that in our mind, and the goal in the week is 20 to 50 phone calls. 20, actually 25 to 50. And that's according to how much you want to, you know, get accomplished. These are going to be, and if you think about this, okay, so that's a week. So if it was 50, then how many phone calls do you need to make a day if you're working five days? Yeah. So at the top of your thing, then you would put that on the goal sheet. So at the top of the goal sheet, it says how many weekly. So you might put 50, and every day you're going to do it, and you hope the total is going to equal 50, right? So you're going to break it down daily. 
Is that, y'all with me? Okay, so 25 to 50 calls a day. This can be reorders, booking, meeting invitations, pre-profiling your guests, coaching, follow-up calls, um, anything that, that resolves in contacting the person that you want to reach. Um, it does not include just leaving a message. and does not include no answer. Uh, does it include text? Um, I'm going to say yes if you are having a texting conversation. Uh, sending them a text with no response back does not count. <laughs> Okay, because you, you know what I'm saying? If you want to invite somebody to text, they come back and say yes, and you're actually kind of like you're talking, that's fine, but I would encourage you to pick up the phone too. I mean, I know people don't like to talk on the phone these days, but really, it does help you move your business a little bit faster. I, I mean, I remember this one girl, it took me almost an hour to text her what I could have said in like five minutes, but we had to go back and forth. She just, that's the way she wanted to do it. And I signed her up, but it took forever, you know? Um, so that's the first one. Okay, retail sales. And you know, I would like your goal to be whatever you choose, but I would say four to six hundred dollars a week. Because if you're holding parties, that's easy to do. How many, um, how many parties? Did you do a party last week? I did Saturday. Okay, do you know what your sales were? It'll be five something. Okay. I just ain't got no order. So that's just one party over five hundred dollars. So four to six hundred dollars a week. It's not a big deal if you're holding if you're gonna agree to hold a party, right? And if you agree to hold more than one party, it should be way higher than that. Okay. But either way, you pick your, your number. It may be like for someone like you that's been having these higher parties, you may say, Hey, I need thousand dollar weeks. So you put a thousand there and then every day you're gonna subtract how much you sold. And that's great because toward the end of the week you say, Hey, you know what? I almost did that goal I set for myself. Does that make sense? And it's gonna keep you on track. Okay? Sometimes, I know y'all just get to the meeting and then you start adding up everything when you could have done more if you had tried it all week long, okay? I mean, that's the whole idea. Okay, booking attempts. This is the number of attempts to book to sell, uh, to book selling appointments. Attempts, they don't, maybe not, they all book, but you called them and you asked them and they even told you no, yes or no, okay? And so, I would say you need to do at least 15 to 25 booking attempts a week to get the bookings because only about half are going to book and only about half are going to hold. So if I called 25 people, that's about 12 people that might book and out of that about six would actually hold, right? So and this could be bookings for the future, it doesn't have to be bookings for that week. Does that make sense? So just bookings, you know, and a good rule of thumb is on that, let's say it's 25. So you got five days, so if you did five booking attempts a day. Whether they booked or not, but you, you're going to try at least five people a day to book, you know, then that would be something you could work on. If your goal was to, the 15, then that's trying to book three people a day, three attempts to get a booking. Okay? So that doesn't sound too hard, does it? Just to talk to three people? All right. Um, okay, the next is selling appointments booked. These are the ones that you actually did book. Okay, now we're trying to book before, but these are that you did book. So the goal would be like seven to ten a week so that you could have your three to five appointments a week. You know, our national, Jamie Verenios, she never veers off that number, three to five parties a week, is what it's gonna take to move you up to Red Jacket, you know, team leader, sales director, one in a car. Three to five appointments a week. Three to five parties a week, let's say you took two hours to do the parties, would be anywhere from six to 10 hours a week. And you know, you could even throw in, you know, an, an extra hour to get there set up, take the orders, you know. So let's say it, the whole party took you three hours, including getting there and doing the whole thing. That's still, if you had three parties, then that's nine hours you're working, right? And if you had five parties, that's still only, you know, whatever that is, 15 hours a week. A real part-time job, like if I went to the Zippy Mart and said I need a part-time job, it's 20 hours. That's what they consider part-time, 20 to 30. I'm not working at the Zippy Mart, Brianna. <laughs> she just she just pictured that in her mind, me working at the Zippy Mart, right? Yeah, I've never worked at the Zippy Mart. I'd be scared to, honestly. Um, but uh, <laughs> if you work at the Zippy Mart, it's fine. I'm not dogging you out. I appreciate you. I like the Zippy Marts. I like to buy at the Zippy Mart. I just don't want to work at the Zippy Mart. Okay. <laughs> okay, so the next one is called invitations. This is where you are inviting people to our stuff, right? And honestly, this room should be packed 
with more guests. And we've got like five or six over there, but really we should have like 30, 40. I've had times when we had 30, 40 guests. And, I, I'm, and it's really, it's not hard to get 30 or 40 guests. If all of us, let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten. If all of us had three people there, that's 30 guests. It's just that we're not asking. Would y'all agree that we did not ask enough people? You know, and so, but if you ask, they'll come. And it's just more exciting when you have a lot of people here. And so, if there's something that's holding you back from, and I know, like, some of you drive, and it's like to get people in the car. But I will say that, um, I'm looking at Tanya, by the way. I need to switch over and look She's at an her. hour away. She's an hour away. <laughs> but do you know that when I started Mary Kay, I drove an hour to my sales meeting. And I would just say, hey, you want to go to Little Rock? And, I, you know, that's where we would drive an hour to go up to the meeting. And they're like, yeah, I'll go with you. You know, and I'd just put them in the car with me, and we'd have fun all the way there. I'd try to interview them. And then I promised I'd take them for dessert after the meeting or something. And then after the meeting, we would get dessert and come on back home. So I did it to have somebody to ride with me. You know, I always try to bring people to the meeting. And um, there are some people that just, they don't have anywhere to go, and they'd love to get out and go somewhere. You know, nobody asked them to do anything, right? And so think about that. And if you're local, you might also even just pick them up and say, or me, if they're nervous about it, say, hey, we'll park at Denny's. I'll pick you up, and we'll ride over there together or walk in together. People don't like walking into a place that they don't know what they're going into. Women are nervous about stuff like that. It's just, you know, people like to feel uncomfortable, and even though they say they're going to go at the last minute, they back out because they're like, I don't even know. They don't know when they walk in that door what this is going to be. Some bunch of crazy people or not, right? So if you can meet them in the lobby, or meet them at Denny's, or meet at Wendy's, get you a uh, Frosty, and then come over here. You know, something like that is what I used to do. I'd always meet them early, and we would get, like, I used we used to meet at this place called Big Boys, and we would meet at, it was a Big Boy, Shoney's Hotel, or whatever it was down Lake Park, and we there was a restaurant like a Shoney's there, and we would eat at Shoney's, and we'd walk over to the meeting, and because then I knew I had them, you know? So just think of the different ways if you've had, not had great luck in getting people here of what could you do to make them feel more comfortable. So the, the invitations would be to invite 10 people so that you could get three to five to come. Don't that sound about reasonable? <laughs> so you invite about 10 people to come every single week. Y'all, we could bust this place loose. We really could, right? Okay. Then the last one is team building prospects. You know, I would say, you know, you need to have, from every appointment that you have for the week, that you actually hold three to five, um, then you want to at least have one or two appointments, I mean, people that you could maybe interview from every party that you do. At least one, but maybe two, one or two. So my, my goal would be for y'all to have 10 each week, 10 uh, interviews, prospects that you could talk to about the business. And really, Let's say you had five parties and, you know, two from every party could come from that. Like yours didn't even come from a party, Brianna, because y'all just worked together and you had been talking to her. Is that right? And so sometimes you don't have, they don't have to be at a party, but if you're holding parties, it's easy to find people. You know, what I sometimes do is, like, if, I'm, if you're already a consultant, look down and see who buys the most from me and hit them up and say, listen, you're such a good customer. I, you will really do good selling this. You save money on your own. You can make some money on the side. You know you love the product. It's easy to sell something that you already love, right? So just talking to 10 a week, then you would probably get two recruits a week because it's one out of five will sign up. So, I mean, that's just the numbers, y'all. And we get disappointed because maybe we're only talking to two people and they keep putting us off and we keep working on those two people. And like 10 years from now, there's two people still trying to get $100 up to sign up to sell Mary Kay, right? I mean, am I right or wrong? So, right? But like that girl, I don't know what happened to her. We got to get back on her. She went MIA on us. That's okay. That doesn't mean she's not going to do it. Um, so just remember the postponement The postponement rate is, is the 50%. And you want to double, really everything you want to do in Mary Kay, you just want to double the efforts. And that way you won't be disappointed. And sometimes you're just going to have a week where everything holds, and you'll come in here and be queen of the world and have had a $2,000 week and four new recruits. But sometimes you may come in here and only half held, and you still would have a great week because you prepared for it. Y'all with me? Okay, good. All right, so with these, I think if we started in every single week, starting today, you fill out your paper, and you said, I'm going to just track every single week. I'm going to put this. 
a piece of paper, you can put it in your date book, you can put it on your computer screen, you can put it by your bedside table, it doesn't really matter. And then just, just four, I, I just challenge you for the next four weeks to just keep this little thing, that's your roadmap. If you feel like the goals that I just set for you are too high, then lower them. I mean, it's your goals, not mine, right? But if you have big long-term goals, then those short-term goals have to match up. So if you say to me that you want to be a DIQ, Pam, you know, then you know you got to get 10 to active team members. So and if I told you that's one out of five are going to sign, how many people you got to talk to this month? Probably 20. 25. 50. 50. 50, because one out of five, right? So if you talk to 50, so, but that's okay. Four weeks, you divide that up, you need to be talking about 10 or 15 a week. So, right? And that's just two or three a day, two or three a day, right? So still, you can still break it down. So you break down to the hour, just one every four hours. <laughs> okay? And so, I mean, really, it, don't it help you to do that? Like if you were going to clean your whole house and you say, okay, I'm going to do the laundry room. That's the only one I'm going to do today. And then tomorrow I'm going to tackle my closet, you know, or whatever. And just work a little bit every day till the end of the week your house is clean. You know, some people, that's how they clean their house. I really like to just blitz and just get it all done at one time. Actually, I like to pay a young lady to go do that for me because I really don't like to clean myself. And so I am fixing to be hiring some people in my life. Yes. I'll do it at night. You want to come clean my house? Hey. That's, that's fine with me. If you want to come clean my house, I will pay you. Um, so this week, the assignment for the pay setters is... And it's on, it's going to be on your hand, it's not on the handout you have, but it, you can write them down or you can print it off from the, um, from Facebook or the website. Um, and make sure you, uh, Brianna, just add her to the Clue to Cheetah site so that I can put her on there, okay? Okay, so number one is warm chatter, five people, or a Mary Kay facial, or on the go appointment, and then turn it into a party. So you're going to book the facial. And like I get the time, the date, the place, and everything. Like it's on the books, I'm going to do this girl's facial. And then, once I get everything down, I'll say, you know what, Tanya, it's really easy, just as easy for me to do three or four people as it is to do just one. And really, it's usually more fun for the person. Do you want to see if you can get up, you know, four or five of your girlfriends together? And, and actually, I'll give you free products for doing it. And it helps me because I have a goal each week to see a certain number of people. And, um, you know, that way when I tell you you look good, you won't think I'm just trying to sell something. Your girls, your friends can tell you. How does that sound? Okay? But either way, our appointment is good. I mean, like, I'm coming for you either way. Does that sound good? Yeah. So why don't you get you up some gas. I'll call you back tomorrow and see if you got some people. And then I will call them and just get some information about them and their skin. So you can just text me their name and number once you get some gas up. Does that sound good? All right, so if I, I'll try to catch back with you tomorrow to get your list from you if you don't, if, if that's soon enough. Just text them out, okay? okay? All right, and that's how I'll do that. If she does not get a guest, I still got her because one is better than none. Would y'all agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah, one's better than none. So sometimes, actually most of the time, that's how I book. Just like Pam with that girl the other day, even though she's postponed on you, <laughs> but we booked her for an appointment. She was our waitress at a, a restaurant in Tifton. So we booked her for the appointment. And then um, after we had the, the appointment, I said, hey, you want to invite some of the people around here? You get some of your girlfriends together, blah, blah, blah. She's like, yeah, I'll do that. But see, we already had the appointment. So it wasn't like, but if I'd have said, hey, do you want to do a Mary Kay party? They'd be like, mm, I don't think so. Because that sounds like a lot of trouble. I've got to clean my house. i got to go buy a bunch of food for people. I just don't have time for no party, right? But would you like to be pampering, pampered for an hour? Yes. Great. Okay, so we'll get that down. Then we're going to invite the friends. It's a trick. We trick them. <laughs> we do. We don't lie. We trick them. But it's, it works. It works, y'all. So have y'all ever tried to book that way instead of just trying to book a party? And have you found that it works? Mm -hmm. That word pampering works. Yes, <laughs> pampering is a key to it. So, okay, so your goal are right, warm chatter five people for a facial, and then you're going to turn them into a party if you can. Number two is you're going to hold three group selling appointments, which is like a party, three parties, three parties, and four team building interviews this week. So, three parties and four interviews. 
Now, I would want to hold more than four, but that's, that's just the pace center challenge, okay? Um, and then number three, um, make an all-out effort to have at least a $500 week this week. Wouldn't y'all love to have a $500 week and a profit two fifty? That's not hard. If you did one party, look, Tanya did one party and did 500 But let's say you only had a $200, 250 party, then have two of them, right? So, and then number four is use and complete this week's roadmap to success. And be persistent. Don't give up. You know, you can accomplish everything on there if you don't give up. And you may have a little, I, I used to do little deals for myself. I'd say, okay, this is my goal, and if I have it all done, then on Saturday, I'm going to go whatever I wanted to do. Play golf, go to the beach, whatever my little thing that I like to do. But if I haven't, I've got to work Saturday. And I just, because I was depending on that money, I've only done Mary Kay for 28 years. So any bill that I have ever had, I'm the only one that has been paying it. You know, now I got married a couple years ago, and then so Brad helps. But I still have all my bills that I still pay, whether he's here or not, you know. And so I've had to depend on the Mary Kay income. So I know that I can't just not work, right? I, I have to have money. <laughs> now, I am all about enriching y'all's lives at the same time. I'm making money. <laughs> no, I want y'all to make money, too. But you know what I mean? Once you have enough money, then you just work because it's your business, and that's just what you do, and you can help other people. And it's more rewarding to me. I don't even look at the, the money part of it. I mean, it's coming in because you start flowing, and once you start making it, you don't, that's not an issue in your life anymore, and you can focus on more important things, you know? But... If it's a business and you want to make money, if you need money, y'all need money for Christmas for your kids, you know, and um, Thanksgiving and other things you want to spend on, this is how to do it, okay? So um, I want to kind of finish up tonight by talking about a little sheet. Let's see if I stuck it in here. Hang on. This one right here. So y'all grab this out. I, I came up with this today. It's not on the pace setters, but it says, um, are you in debt? You don't have to answer it, but if you are, Mary Kay is your answer. And I'm going to share with y'all something for me. By the way, hey everybody, Kelly and Heather and Connie and Kelly. Uh, Kelly, thank you. She's making such great comments. Um, and yes, you can just put me in your pocket. <laughs> so I was thinking today. Um, we had a um, we had a shine call. Uh, you know, the, who, who's registered for the shine call? Is there Okay, if you're not, are you? Okay, let me encourage, let me just take a little commercial for that. We have four national sales directors that do the shine calls, and that's just what they're called. They're the phone calls that you just call in and listen. You don't have to say a word, so you don't have to get all nervous about anything. But it's every Wednesday night, and it's at 10 o'clock, and then they also send you the playback number, and then they send you the recordings of all of them, like, and it's every Wednesday night, and there's four national sales directors that each have been million-dollar directors before they were nationals. And they each speak for about 15 to 20 minutes. And um, some a little longer. You know, they're not on a real strict schedule. So just kind of, if you're real regimented, just kind of try to let that go before you go on these calls. But they're so good. And when you sign up for them, under um, our national, Jamie Varenios, and if you want to write this website down, it's www.j. CV Global, Jamie Cruz Varenios, jcvglobal.com. Uh huh, JCV Global, and you click on training, and you'll see it's a little drop down menu. It's $20 to get on the calls for three months. And once you do, you'll also get, they'll send you a phone number through email every week. And then once you do, you also get the phone numbers for the ACL call. This is ACL stands for Accelerated Core Leadership. People that, it's really for anybody that wants to move up. Tonight is an ACL call, and it's at 10, and you can just listen to it. And I know some of you guys go to bed really, really early. Uh, I'm a night person, so it really works for me. I'm so happy that it's not like a 6 o'clock in the morning call. But so <laughs> I'm glad it's a night call, personally. Yeah, but some of you, if you have to do that, get up at 6 and listen to it. I don't care. Um, but those calls are free, and that's every couple of weeks she'll do an ACL call for the consultant. And that's just our national Jamie Brenius. She is starting something in addition right now for a select group. It is for a consultant that wants to get in a red jacket. And if you're already in red, you can move up to the next level, like get on target. But even if you never want to become a director, but you'd like to get in a red jacket, 
she's starting these calls on the 14th. And um, you have to be registered, it's free. You have to be registered for Shine. And then they will send you an email and invite you to uh, reach out to the office, Jamie's office, and tell them that you want to be on this special call. It's gonna be four weeks and um, it'll take you through the week after Thanksgiving. And her goal is to help every single one of you at least get into your red jacket. And what she's gonna do, which is, this is why I would do it if I were y'all. She's gonna have an event that she invites just those women that are on those calls. Like not the directors, not all the nationals, just those women, just the reds, and just, or just the people that are in that call that spend special time with her. So I think it's really neat because what happened is she just went to an event and Ann Newberry, who's the number one national sales director emeritus in the world, said to the nationals, you need to get in front of your reds and you need to move people into red. They need to have a connection with the national, not just with the director. So Jamie's doing this for me and for y'all. Like she is gonna work personally with the consultants, which is unheard of, really. And do y'all know that she really doesn't make one dollar off us because we're her adopted unit. So I just think 20 bucks, that's a lot you get for 20 bucks. So if you, did, did y'all already get the email that invited you? You didn't? Okay, well, look, do either one of y'all have Gmail? Sometimes they're coming, they're coming under the promotions folder. Okay, well, email her back, email her back and say, please let me know, Cleta, talk to me about it. I did not get it. Okay, good. Um, but when you get the email, there's two emails on there. It says reply to the office or to me directly. Well, today she did a call and she said, Several of your people have replied to me directly, which I love that. So, I want my people to do, reply straight to Jamie's email. Email her, say who you are, you're in our unit, you, you have zero recruits, one recruit, two, ten, whatever you got, and that you would love to be in your red jacket, or I would love to be DIQ, or I'd love to be on target for my car. You know, and, uh, and then what they'll do is they will put you on a list, they're forming the list, and they will be sending out that phone number. Okay? So if you're not on Shine, then you can register for that tonight. And then once you register, they will send you that email, invite you to participate in that too, okay? So I wanna just put a plug in for that. But anyway, one of the things she talked about today is about are you in, de are you in debt? Or she was talking to us about are there people in your life that are in debt that are thinking what could I do to pay off these credit card debts or whatever debt you got? Or what could I do to make extra money for Christmas and a lot of them are going to go over to the mall and wrap presents for eight dollars an hour. Eight dollars an hour. They're going to stand on their feet for ten hours to make eighty dollars. When in Mary Kay they could do one party, an average party, which is the worst of the best, the best of the worst, right, is about three hundred fifty dollars. And so they could make one hundred twenty-five dollars in two hours where they stand on their feet wrap presents for eight, eight hours. You know, is that, so we gotta find those women, right? But even you yourself, I wanna show you on this piece of paper how just doing parties, just your parties, not even your reorder business, could help give you either extra money if you don't have any debt, or if you do have debt, it could help you pay down your debt, okay? We've all had times in our, well, maybe not. I have had times in my life where I've had debt. I had, uh, once I had a, a divorce and I was over $50,000 in debt. I mean, I'm not proud of it. I was a pink Cadillac director, but I, I, that's what I had. And so it took me a little bit, but I paid every dollar off. You know, I got a little plan and I thought, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. And it was like a three year plan. And, but I did it. I paid, I mean, I didn't write any of them off, paid every single one of them off. And how? Mary Kay, right? And so I wanna sh look, want y'all to look at this. If you committed to have 10 parties in November, so that's about two and a half a week. Now we did we did just miss one. So if you didn't do anything last week, then you gotta do it. You gotta double up. So you might do three parties a week, you know, at plus one. So ten parties at three hundred dollars a piece would be three thousand dollars that you would sell. Okay? Your profit on that is how much? Fifteen hundred because half, right? But you do have to run a business, right? And I want you to do the shine calls. You need some books, you need some invoices. You need some different things, you need gas money, right? 
So let's say 10% you're going to keep for business expenses. All right, that's $150. And then 30% would be for you, like maybe right now you can't put all your profit towards your debt. You know, you need to have somebody to live on. So maybe just take 30% to live on of your profit. Is that, are y'all with me? And then let's take the other 60%, that would be $900, and pay that toward one of your credit cards or whatever you're trying to pay off. It may just be you're trying to pay off a car or something, you know, whatever it is. If you did that, you know, November, December, January, February, March, April, by the end of April, you would have paid off $5,400 already towards your debt. And if you think about it, if you're paying off cards, you're really paying off way more than that because interest is adding up every month. You don't pay it off, right? If you know much about financing. After, um, if you did it for a year, you would pay off over $10,800. And that's just having three parties a week and only taking 60% of that of your profit to pay on it. So I was just thinking that, to me, that's doable for anybody. If you have a lot more debt, you could increase your parties or you could increase the, um, your sales by getting better. You will increase your sales. And then also your, um, you could add some to like your reorder business and different things like that. Cause let's, if you had 10 parties a month, 10 times, let's say you have five people at every party. Okay. That's 50 people. 50 to 60 people you're facing. I'd li I like to try to have six people at the party. What would say your average number? Oh gosh. Five, five, or, five or six. Five or six, mm -hmm. yeah. So if you have six people at a party and then there's 10 of them, that's 60 people. And if you think about that, if let's say only half bought product from you, just half. Half said, thank you very much, I don't have any money, bye. <laughs> that's okay. So 30 people every single month became customers then that, whatever they purchase is going to run out in about three to four months. So they're going to have to come back and order it again. Okay? So they, you're, that reorder business, starting that third month, you're going to have double the money that you had because all these November people are going to be reordering in January. All the December people are going to reorder in March. That's why, like, today I delivered an $80 order, a $25 order and a $70 order, so whatever, that's almost $200. Three people, they were all reorders, you know, and so once you start selling on a consistent basis, that's why you have to really be consistent for three to four months, then every, it starts flowing the money in, and every month you start to get re reorder business. How many have already started to get some reorder business from parties you've done? Have you already started yet? Reorders? Probably not yet, because you've, you've only been doing parties two months. You've been September, two months? October. Yeah. So you, next month, you'll start hitting it, Tanya, and you'll be like, wow, this girl want a cleanser, moisturizer? You know, they're going to start running low on that stuff. Because, you know, we want to really teach that they use it twice a day, right? <laughs> Preach that to your people, right? And, um, and you'll start getting that reorder business in. So I was just looking, you know, just 10 parties a week is really just two and a half parties. I mean, 10 parties a month is, <laughs> that's funny, I typed it wrong. I said 10 parties a week is only two and a half a week. Y'all don't like that math? Okay, so 10 parties a month is only two, two and a half a week. Um, yeah. Hey, Brian saw that today. He said, I think she meant to say the other. Well, hey, at least he's reading it, right? Yeah. I had to correct that. But anyway, you can tell I really did do it, right? I didn't copy it off somebody else's. Yeah. So you see the idea on it. And does that sound doable to some of y'all? So what I was thinking is not only for yourself, but, and I will fix this flyer and repost it on Facebook uh, where it has the right thing on the bottom. Um, but maybe you know somebody that really needs to pay off some debt. Like maybe, you know when, I tell you a lot of times people are really trying to pay off debt, well all the time, but right before they're wanting to buy a house, you know, or buy a car. Because they can't get qualified because they got too much debt, right? And so if, they, if you had a plan to pay off some stuff, and then they could go get that house. Wouldn't that help some people? So you could be, t as, you, as you have your parties, this is what I'd like you to do, is at your parties you say, hey, I want to tell you that, you know, at the meeting the other week, my director gave us a little plan that where we could pay off anywhere from almost $6,000, you know, $6,000 in the next six months off of debt. If any of you are interested in learning how to do that, you know, I've got a plan. Because people like a plan. And this is a plan. Right? Y'all got any questions on this? Do you think that's going to help y'all? You think it's going to help y'all? <laughs> well, hey, listen, thank y'all for all for 
watching this, if you watched it live, you know, give me a little heart, give me a thumbs up, something, right? <laughs> Otherwise, um, if you're watching it back, I'd love for you to comment on here that you watched it. And the forms will be, um, actually they're already on Facebook, so you can just scroll down a little bit on this page and you can print out the whole lesson and the assignments, all right? And you guys have a wonderful um, evening. I wanna say that this month of November, we're doing our marketing calls every Wednesday night at nine o'clock. Anybody that you want me to talk to, just have them call in. You can call in with them, and I'm going to do the marketing every Wednesday night this week. Um, this Wednesday, either I will do it or Janet Holloway will do it, because I'm going to be in Michigan. And so um, I might jump on there, but I may have her start the call just to make sure it's done at the right time. Okay? So that's at 9 o'clock. And then our little Cletus Cheetah call is at 930, and I will be on that one either way. That phone number is um, on the website. Or, well, I can't look it up because it's right here. But can y'all hear me? For some reason, this thing said mute all of a sudden. Why? I do not know. Okay, well, I guess they heard me. Kelly, did y'all hear me just fine? Okay, maybe she did. All right, bye, y'all. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to talk to these people in person. Thank y'all for watching.